Hi, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home skillet biscuit and happy Saturday. If you don't know what Saturday is, it's when I do a little something on my channel called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. However, as you can tell, I already have my makeup on because if you're new to the channel, hello. I hyper fixate on things. This week's <laughs> obsession. This week's obsession is not probiotic pops or squishmallows. Granted, I. I, I do have one more coming in the mail. I'll introduce you to him when he gets here. It's an avocado. I'm picking a name as we speak. I'm thinking Avi the avocado. So cute. Anyway, but no, this week I've been obsessed with documentaries. In the last three days, I just finished the 13th. <laughs> And to be honest with you, I'm scratching to get back to the rest of my list. Don't worry, I made a video on the first 10. Uh, it, it'll be next week, not Saturday, like next midweek. But um, yeah, that's taken a lot of my time. Three days, 13 documentaries, mind you. A lot of those are limited series. <laughs> Most of them are not just like an hour and a half shot. Most of them are four hours <laughs> minimum, three, four hours minimum. That's that's Olympic television watching. Anyway, uh, so with that said, because I procrastinated, my makeup's already on and I'm just gonna be talking for today. <laughs> yes, before we get into that, we got housekeeping. As you all know, we have to keep the, the lights on. Side note, another thing for me to complain about. The lights that I use to um, brighten up my videos, one of them are just the lights from a dresser that I have and one singular light went out. And apparently you can't just replace one bulb. You have to replace all of them. Why are they $10 a bulb? See, this is what I mean. Why is life so expensive? Maybe I should just like sell everything and live in like a cave somewhere or like make something out of sand dunes or sorry. I started to get a little existential. I'm very low on iron. Okay. Send it over to Admiral. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Adroll Kenny to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Case the Foy. I have been trying to bag a Case to Fi sponsorship for a hot minute because I think their cases are so cute. It's Case to Fi and the Louvre. It's the DeMillo, Venus DeMillo. Isn't that a TikToker? Sorry. But Case to Fi offers cute, stylish, and protective cases for your beloved phones. Their ultra and impact cases are able to protect your phone with military grade protection, baby. You have endless print options. I'm gonna show you some of the ones I got. I really like their collaboration ones. There's a Ryan one from Cacao Talk. But right now I'm feeling a little classy. I'm doing something that shows me I'm an orc girl, but you can customize them, get your names, get your initials, get things that move. There's kinetic sand ones that also made me feel like like I was five, I was very amused. Case Defy Impact and Ultra Impact cases are 65% recycled. They're made of 65% other stuff. And every case comes with 100% recycled packaging. Made from recycled paper and non-toxic soy-based ink. But most importantly, your phone won't break. Wait, let's do it again. I'm six foot tall, so I'm going straight for my head, babe. We still good, it's me and my mommy. Impact and ultra impact cases can be protected up to 9.8 feet. It's protected, it's also really thin, so it's not like you're carrying a book. And their cases also offer Defensify, an antimicrobial, I can't say words, an antimicrobial coating that kills 99% of bacteria so your grubby little fingers won't make you sick. So if you'd like to check out Caseify, feel free to click on the link down in the description box. That's caseify.com slash KennyJD to get 15% off your purchase. Big thanks again to Case 5 for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. Oh, I just realized that if you're watching this right now, this is the first time I'm using the mic for you guys. This is my new mic. I've been told that apparently this is like a very legit mic that people use for podcasting when they do podcast things and podcasting thingies that they do podcasts. And so um, I'm curious if you guys notice any difference in sound quality, I'm playing around with it. I don't know what I'm doing. It made me buy a bunch of extra shit that I've never had to use before to use a mic. So hopefully it's worth it. <laughs> I could um, imagine it being distracting when I do like one with makeup, like doing makeup. So I'm gonna figure something out, I don't know. But as of right now, I can get really close to it and have a very uh, sensorily satisfying experience. I don't have nails right now.
So, uh, <laughs> last week we watched Detroit Dreams, <laughs> the story of a man from Detroit who really wanted us to know he's from Detroit and was willing to put on for his city. It's from Tubi. Um, and they spelled Detroit wrong like three times in the movie. A hard watch. Uh, but my video is funny, so you should watch it. <laughs> if you want to check that out, that'll be linked up above, or you can check it out in the Bad Movies in a Beat playlist. And this week we're talking about the movie that I was planning on talking about last week. Gabriel's Rapture Part 2. We're back with our friends over at Passion Flicks. You think it can't get worse. And somehow it always does. Like, it's always remarkable um, the choices that are made in this film and in this series. But they they do make them. But before we get started, of course, we have to do the unsponsored rundown of what Passion Flicks is and also an intro to Gabriel's Inferno and therefore Gabriel's Rapture Part 2. <laughs> but Passion Flicks is just this horrid uh, streaming site in which they turn really crappy romance novels into really crappy romance movies. I like to ignore the fact that the CEO of the streaming company is Elon Musk's sister, Tosca. It really does show that money can't buy talent, and <laughs> but it can buy you your own streaming service. Often she is the executive producer. I think I've seen her direct a few uh, movies on Passion Flicks as well. So, you know, reach for your dreams. You can achieve anything through nepotism. This series, Gabriel's Inferno, is their longest series to date as far as I'm aware. We are currently on the fifth movie. I've done four videos on the past episodes, if you will. So you may need to watch those to know what we're talking about. For all intents and purposes, I'll link all of them down below if you would like to watch them because you may need to. But basically the very short of it is that we are now on the fifth movie of the Gabriel's Inferno franchise and the second movie of the second book, if I'm not mistaken, of the novels, Gabriel's Rapture. The story revolves around a master student by the name of Julia Mitchell, who ends up in a romantic relationship with her professor, a Mr. Gabriel Emerson, who of course has a dark past, a brooding personality, and suspected inappropriate urges. Hey, Miss Myers! <laughs> if you were wondering if it has anything to do with Twilight, of course. <laughs> If I'm not mistaken, it was also a Twilight fan fiction. She's mousy, quiet, and unassuming, and therefore he has this inexplicable obsession with her. Um, at this point, they are now a couple, but this episode shows that it's not gonna be all smooth sailing for these two lovers, question mark. In this movie, they decide to make certain decisions that I'm truly not surprised by. The author seems to really hate women. <laughs> I don't think I've ever explicitly said that, but I, I do get the vibe that she just don't like any women, <laughs> except for like mousy, virginal, naive girls like Julia. But um, there's gonna be more problems with bitchy, antagonistic women. I'm not gonna go through everything that's happened in the last four movies because we'd be here all day. But long story short, a lot of romanticization of this very inappropriate power imbalance. Something that rhymes with brooming is meant to be fine because this is just the beginning of their love story. And that's all before we even get to the ex baby mama and the cocaine abuse. He has a daughter that passed away. We still don't know how. And I don't, I just don't like how we're just gonna act like that's not important. Like, <laughs> how did the baby die? We don't, cause no one ever says there was an accident, anything. Just they were really high and now they have a dead child. And no one asks enough questions about that. Moving right along, we didn't pay attention to anything else. Terrible, he did, so why start now? Because the more important thing is they're in love. But yes, romance and every other woman is terrible. And for some reason, Given Dome is also very like, thematically, narratively important as well. I can't explain to you why other than it's like the meter stick of whether or not you're a good person, how a good woman, how good are you 
on the flute stick. Again, watch the other videos. I can't <laughs> go into the specifics of those. But anyway, this movie begins uh, again with the same intro. We should just know at this point, this is the fifth movie. They're not going to change the intro. They're not going to change the song. Just expect what you should expect and move along. They make these movies with the budget of a bag of chips. So I don't know why I'm surprised that they didn't think to make a new one for each film. Anyway, we are of course are back with Gabriel and Julia. She tells him about the ex-friend that tried to blackmail her. If you don't remember that backstory in the last movie, she had an ex-friend that was sleeping with her ex who wanted to blackmail her with a video of her giving Dome again. <laughs> And they were gonna put that video out if she didn't drop the charges against her ex for assault. She doesn't become really a factor in this movie and I was just gonna take this out, but I kind of wanted to talk about it just in general as a way to say they introduce so much shit in these movies and never come back to them. This is all they're gonna do. They're gonna like talk it over like, yeah, I was blackmailed and that's the end of it. And this got me thinking, y'all remember Mommy Dom from like the first movie, the really creepy, <laughs> like professor who just didn't care about keeping her job. I was like, we haven't seen her for like four movies. Are they ever gonna come back to that? Now, with that said, it's not all bad. They do make some correct decisions. One of which is that they both start going to therapy separately. And <laughs> I don't know, I get the sense that this movie is almost at the point. It almost sees the problems about certain things and misses the mark every time. Because the therapist essentially says to her, I'm really concerned about all the things I've been concerned about. The weird power dynamic, the way that his personality seems like it would very much so dominate over her, even without that aspect of the power dynamic of them being student teacher, or at least at one point more student teacher. But because this is supposed to be a love story and that is the common denominator, like we're not gonna focus on anything else because this is a passion, well, this is a romance movie. I can't even blame this entirely on passion flicks. It's like most romance kind of drops the ball. Like it, I do get a bit cynical, but I do feel like a lot of uh, American media around, especially like younger adult or teenage romance revolves around uh, flowery abuse. Like, oh, we're just so toxic for each other, but it's exciting. And it's like, y'all do know that being happy <laughs> is an option, right? But yeah, the therapist is like, yeah, he has so many things that will prove to be difficult, his personality, your social dynamic, his past with addiction. And she's just kind of like, we're in love. And then the cherry on top, that lets you know that if this was a real relationship, this would just blow up right in front of both of their eyes, is that he gets at the starting line of therapy. <laughs> and he's like, the therapist is like, I'm a little concerned because it seems as though you're not going to meetings for like Narcotics Anonymous and like people to help with drug addiction or people that are currently sober. And he just quits therapy entirely. I was like, that's not a great sign. Not even like you got a new therapist, you and this therapist weren't meshing. You just literally stopped. Okay, cool. So remember Paul? I don't know if you remember Paul cause I barely remembered him at one point, but the friend, the nice guy that likes Julia, but says that he's willing to be the friend and no pressure. I just enjoy being your friend. We can stay that way or whatever. She ends up seeing him one day while she's out with Gabriel and Gabriel goes inside of a building. I don't know why she stood outside waiting for him to like just go in the building. It's cold in Canada, but okay, for the scene to take place. <laughs> um, she sees Paul and he notices that he hasn't talked to her in a while. He's like, hey, how are you? And he notices the mark on her neck, the bite mark, the one that her abusive ex gave her in one of the other movies. Paul is like, hey, what happened there? Are you all right? He starts to think that it's whatever boyfriend she's currently with, because at one point she was like, oh, I started a new relationship. Hey, is everything okay? Like. Is he hurting you? Are you all right? Do you need something? And she's like, no, like I'm getting it removed. I know it's an ugly scar, but I'm just, I'm getting it removed. And she doesn't really say much more about that. And he's just basically like, if you ever need me, I'm here for you. Like, don't like suffer by yourself. I will help you. Paul, he's been great this whole time. And, is, and assuming he don't switch up on us, he's been great, but no, y'all don't want peace. <laughs> this is true though. I do feel like most people don't want people that treat them well. I've noticed that. Baby, heal, please. Find comfort, find love of oneself because it's getting very tired. Y'all are 27. Um, <laughs> but 
because they're still friends, later they end up meeting up for a cup of coffee and he tells her about Bitchy Bangs, the girl that used to work with Gabriel that obviously had like a crush on him. Obviously one of the many antagonistic women in this story. So you probably don't know who she is. The one with the bangs. That's why I call her Bitchy Bangs. I'm sure she has a name. Her name is Bitchy Bangs. Anyway, but apparently she's like, why is Julia working with apparently the most decorated thesis advisor on campus like she's jealous of all of these kind of seemingly random um, accolades and awards attention that she seems to be getting and she starts to suggest that it's perhaps because of a relationship that she has with uh emerson gabriel and ding 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 it's right because they and I would look at you sideways too if you fucking a professor and now all of a sudden you get a trip to Harvard. She ended up invited to Harvard, by the way. Call her up personally, PhD program. They're like, hey, you have been very much so recommended by this advisor. We want you in Harvard. All you got to do is finish your master's thesis, and which I'm sure you'll do. And you come into Harvard. Man, if I can go to Ivy League by putting out pussy, I see why someone would. Julia, regardless of how book smart she is, is a dumb bitch. And she's like, I don't know if I can go to Harvard because like, what about my relationship? Why? When I tell y'all shit like this actually makes me like irrationally angry. I mean it. When I see, when I see a woman in particular giving up career opportunities, accolades, a bag for a man. Every time I see a woman just throw her W's to the side for a man who may or may not wipe his own ass. It breaks my heart. And this bitch don't even exist. This is a movie. She's like, I don't wanna be away from you. I feel like it'll be the end of our relationship. Then you don't have a relationship. If it can't last for you to go uh, like an hour flight away, then y'all wouldn't have lasted regardless. If you gotta be sniffing up under his ball sack to exist in a relationship, y'all don't love each other that much. But he's like, no, don't even worry about that. I'm gonna take a sabbatical because I want to go with you. Personally, that would annoy me because we didn't even have a conversation about you coming with me. What if I wanted to be alone? What if I like my alone time and now and now you're planning on living with me and didn't ask? That would make me mad, but okay, I'm just difficult, okay? <laughs> but she's happy, of course. That is until she gets a letter that is essentially a complaint and she's being asked to come in for a preliminary interview. She tells Gabriel and she's like, why would, why would I have to go in? Like, I didn't plagiarize anything. I didn't do any of the things that would theoretically be on the chopping block. And I don't know why she didn't immediately assume it was their completely inappropriate relationship, but she doesn't. They do eventually put it together after Bitchy Bangs has filed a complaint of sexual harassment against Gabriel. Oh, this is the route we're taking. I think the thing that makes me really frustrated about this being the route we're taking is because Gabriel is textbook someone to abuse power and they're making it sound like he wouldn't do that because he's the lead in a romance novel. <laughs> this dude is screaming red flags. <laughs> Screaming would probably do these things. But here he tells Julia and she's immediately like, you're not that type of person. Wasn't he making out with you and you were underage? Well, we're in love. Bitch, shut up. You a victim. And you know what they do after that? They f she don't even, she don't even pause. She's like, oh, that's not true. I'm like, wow. Even with a dude I've never had any signs about, I would at least say, ooh, let's spend some time apart, you know. Maybe away a bit. No, she's like, oh, I don't, I don't believe it. But yeah, they have sex after that. Uh, they play a song that seems like it's sung by the chick that sung uh, Bass I May, Bass I May Mucho. Como si fuera esta noche la última. This. Um, it sounds like her voice. Her voice is pretty distinctive. I think it's in Portuguese though. I'm not sure, but I do like this song. And it of course annoys me because whenever you put a halfway decent song in a shitty movie, it's usually when they're having sex. So I have to watch this stupid ass sex scene just to hear the like, the vibes. <laughs> a little long. The scene was very long because they had to f the whole time. As if there's not enough red flags, we have a whole conversation when they're on like vacation. They go to vacation right after this. 
nothing on your mind. Just go, okay. And he kind of says something in passing along the lines of like, I'm so thankful that you saved me, quote unquote, from bitchy bangs. And I'm like, pardon? Like, what do you mean? What is there to save you from? You were her advising professor. You are the person in power. Is this you insinuating that you would have had a relationship with her too? I mean, granted, he's currently f***ing a theoretically former student because she's not in his class anymore, but he's been wanting to f*** a student this whole time. I'm sure this wouldn't be outside of his realm of possibility. So it just sounds like you would have considered a relationship with her, which is would be along the lines of writing you up for sexual harassment or sexual advances. But Julia's a f idiot. So she doesn't put anything together. And she decides to get a lawyer to go with her into her disciplinary meeting. Um, she tells the story of her and Gabriel to the lawyer. Reminds the audience that they met when she was 17. Uh, and I guess they just ignore that little blip of information by putting like a montage and like sweet music as if this isn't fucking disturbing. <laughs> like, the lawyer kind of says to her, okay, here's the thing. If you and him had a consensual relationship, then you both violated agreements at the school, non-fraternizing agreement, and you'll both be held accountable for that. However, being that he is a man of power in this position, you could very much so be seen as a victim. He grades your papers. He's your advisor. He's He shouldn't have a relationship with you while he's in such a specific state of power and that by proxy victimizes you. And if you say that, then he would get in trouble. He would be held accountable because he is a professor. No, it was completely consensual. We are in love. And you know, I know this is supposed to be a romance movie, but this shit broke my heart. <laughs> I find this movie horrifying. <laughs> I'm like, wow, so many people have been in her position and she does not understand that this is not good. This is not good. And she's like, no, we're in love. Like he loves me. And because this is a romance movie, they're not gonna undermine the romance, right? They're not gonna make him a realistic guy who would be like this, who would be hitting on a bunch of students. They're gonna make him like super devoted to her. And that pisses me off. Cause if you meet a guy like Gabriel, he's bad news. Just so that you know that if you ever like, if you ever meet a guy like Gabriel, he's not like a sexy man with a dark baz. Best case scenario, he's gonna cheat on you. <laughs> I haven't brought this up, but the therapists in this, either these are the worst therapists that have ever existed or uh, whoever wrote this has never been to therapy. <laughs> but, but the therapist that Julia is still seeing basically tells her that Gabriel isn't in therapy anymore, which is, definitely a violation of something because apparently the therapist's husband was Gabriel's therapist. And so that's another thing. Are they supposed to tell each other <laughs> that? Canada, what are the rules in Canada? I'm pretty sure <laughs> they're not supposed to do that though. So they finally go to the disciplinary meeting and this is where it is officially revealed that Bitchy Bangs has filed a complaint alleging that Julia was Gabriel for academic favors, which I gotta say, the evidence doesn't look very good. Even if you love each other, I haven't seen you write anything this whole movie and now you're going to Harvard. That's all I'm saying. They had what seemed to be a very personal argument in front of students. That was in the second movie. Soon afterwards, she changed advisors from him to the other woman who ends up being this incredibly zealous advisor. She gets huge grants. She's She seems to be abnormally supported and now she's going to Harvard. So like, what's going on? Throughout the meeting, lawyers do what lawyers do. No one likes a lawyer until you need one. The lawyer suggests that Julia should file a harassment complaint against Bitchy Bangs, which she reluctantly agrees to, which I find wild. What harassment? What did she, do? like, yeah, she's kind of pissed off, but like, is she lying? <laughs> is she wrong? <laughs> like, sure, you weren't him for favors, but you fucked him and got him. Granted, she also wanted to fuck Gabriel, but that's a moot point right now. Gabriel gets upset, punches a wall, breaks like a knuckle or something. That shit is not normal. That shit is not cute. I've heard of a lot of dudes that do that. And then want to talk about how emotional women are. I have all my knuckles, all right? So Gabriel ends up upset that Bitchy Bangs has gone to like the board 
of student, the student advisory board or complaints, whatever, um, to say that he had made advances towards her. And when she turned him down, he failed her thesis proposal and threatened to have her removed from the program. And meanwhile, the man running the investigation on the complaint finds the email that Julia sent Gabriel when they were fighting, I think in the second movie, where she said she didn't want to talk to him anymore. Stop talking to me. You're harassing me. I want another advisor. Gabriel goes to Julia's house and they have sex again. It seems as though he was a little strange though and come to find out this was his goodbye act because the next time they meet up for the hearing, he's behaving as if she doesn't exist. In comes Paul and he's like, damn, really? Apparently he was brought in in some way as a witness. I don't really know why. Like, oh, uh, I think he was there and saw kind of the advances that Bitchy Bangs did towards Gabriel, but I don't really know what they put him there for. I guess just to find out that there was something between her and Gabriel. At the meeting, they um, have like hella evidence that they were dating during the semester, which would have been like the the crucial part like did you start dating after the semester ended or were you guys interacting in a way that was inappropriate during the semester and like i said there's a lot of evidence <laughs> that it's obvious that you guys were doing something amorous whether or not it was sexual doesn't matter um you were having a lover's quarrel in front of the entire classroom you switched advisors you sent an email of him harassing you then you go to italy with him and introduced to his colleagues what a idiot why did you bring your student to introduce to his colleagues as his fiance and you want us to believe that you just started dating right after the semester ended like no. Uh, one of the women on the board is like, your relationship is inherently an issue. He has authority over you. He grades your papers. He is your professor. Can we just talk to Julia? And she's like, if you were coerced or intimidated in any way, you have every right to say something about that and we will not punish you for this. And this whole scene is so f uncomfortable because again, this is a romance movie, right? So I'm supposed to think of this, at least how I understand it, I'm supposed to look at this and kind of think of this board as like hindrances to their love when they're just people with common sense. <laughs> people that have valid and very, very reasonable concerns. And I'm supposed to be like, you guys, man, let love prevail. And I'm like, he's abusing you. <laughs> I don't want it to prevail. And instead of feeling like this joy when she's like, no, it was consensual. Like, I love him. I'm so sad when I hear that. I'm like, this is bumming me out. And being that Julia isn't accepting that they have concerns and she's very adamant. She's like, we were in a consensual relationship. Gabriel does the truly noble thing and decides, I'm gonna take the fall for her because she won't do it. Martyrs himself, at least that's what they want me to believe. All right, that's what they want me to feel about it. I admit that we were in a relationship. It's not her fault, I guess, was in the relationship under duress and thereby is not punishable. So he decides to take all the blame and she is devastated. She's like, so what if I wanna throw my life away? It's not your choice. I'm like, this is, again, supposed to be romantic. This is so depressing. <laughs> But long story short, they can't be singing together for obvious reasons. And for all intents and purposes, they break up. Boo hoo, I'm supposed to be sad. I'm not. Um, She keeps trying to like get in contact with him, but he has kind of left his apartment in shambles. He's nowhere to be found. He sends her an email to stop contacting him and that their relationship is officially over. And Paul is there to give her some support in this time of need. This, I will say, this end of the movie was really weird because they put very dramatic music over just like a compilation of him going home and getting in bed. <laughs> it's like, dun, 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 dun. And he's just like laying down. <laughs> but that's the end of the movie. Uh, terrible as usual. I, you know, I always think that the bar can't go any lower when it comes to passion flicks film, especially anything in relation to Gabriel's Inferno. But I am often surprised. You know, I found this movie actually one of the most frustrating because it felt like you're almost at the point, but it's a romance. I'm this far along. You got to believe in their story. And it's like, I don't want them together. <laughs> like I don't like, 
isn't the point of romance like supposed to like enjoy the love of the people? These are two people that should not talk to each other anymore. And I really wish this would be the end, but I know it's not. And I will watch them because I love garbage, I love trash, and I enjoy making myself angry on purpose. If you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you like uh, to recommend any bad movies, put those down in the comment section, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.